misadventures of the romantic cannibals. And um, in this book, I, uh, you know, which I made in 2002, um, I basically was uh, expressing my frustrations uh, with the scandal that took place in 2002, the pedophilia within um, the Catholic Church and also the Protestant Church also have some issues. But in 2002, when that blew up, and at the same time, you know, the, there were many other issues with the, with the, with the church that, um, it, you know, I felt very uncomfortable with, um, especially the, the homophobia that exists within the church. They, they are so much against same-sex marriages. And, uh, you know, I'm a straight male. What can I say? My wife and I, though, we have a lot of uh, gay and lesbian friends everywhere. I have, you know, gay and lesbian uh, faculty at school that are very good friends of mine. I have gay and, and lesbian students of mine. We have gay neighbors that celebrate Christmas. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, and... and and they never have threatened our marriage, you know. Uh, in fact, we, we have gone to their marriages and they are beautiful, you know. Um, their marriages, you cry for it. You know, when, when um, there was that period of time that uh, same-sex marriage was permitted in San Francisco, we went to, to a wedding and it was just really beautiful. So anyway, um, I just decided in 2002 to express my frustrations with that kind of institution. And those were just among some of the messages in the book. Um, you know, in the book, I, I, well, that was right before the, the war in, in Iraq. So I have a war scene also because, uh, you know, some politicians, including the president, were calling for a crusade. So it was becoming kind of almost like a religious war. So all kinds of things are represented in, in this book. So. Suddenly, there was a protest. In, this was in the museum in Loveland, Colorado. And outside the museum, there was a group, a small group of people uh, protesting it from a local church. And a local politician decided to take this case uh, to the city of Loveland. He was actually a city council member. But the city could not even pass the, the definition of pornography because there is no nudity in this book at all. And, and uh, unfortunately, though, uh, Fox News took the case and interviewed this guy, this uh, councilman, for about three minutes, and he demonized the book. Uh, of course, he will not be saying that this book was against bigotry, because that's my, my reason, the reason I did this book. He will say this book is just... Uh, pornographic, it's a religious pornography, it's, um, uh, you know, Jesus having sex, and that's what stuck in the news. And um, I suddenly got a wave of hate mail based on that distortion and demonizing of my work. And in the middle of all this hate mail, I got a very friendly email from a pastor in the same city, in Loveland, Colorado. And he respectfully asked me what the book was about. And I told him what I told you. You know, to me, I mean, there is no, there is no Jesus here. Um, the, there is a collage. There is the body of a woman. And I put an icon on top of the, 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 the it's a comic book from Mexico. And it's just the way I, I put my sentences together. It's my way to express corruption of something spiritual. And uh, he um, accepted my explanation. If he wrote me back and, and he said, thank you for your thoughtful explanation. If you ever come to Loveland, it will be an honor to meet you. And I thought, wow, uh, I, I, I wrote him back. I wish more Christians were like you. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we developed a really good friendship. And one day he asked me, hey, will you make a painting of Jesus that will be non-corrupted for my church? And uh, I thought about it. I said, well, I'm not religious myself. But if your congregation takes it from me, um, I'll be very, very glad to do it. Uh, I said, you know, nobody knows how Jesus looked like because, um, you know, they, from different countries, they have different versions of it. Um, you know, the Mexican Jesus looks Mexican. Um, you know, the Russian Jesus looks Russian. There's a... A Chinese baby Jesus looks totally Chinese. This, uh, you know, um, African uh, uh, Jesus that look very African, etc., um, or European looking. So I say, um, because, you know, the first portraits of Jesus were done uh, many centuries after the time he's supposed to have lived. So I will make maybe my, my version of it, but, um, you know, I, I cannot uh, uh, promise it will be the real portrait, but I would love to do it. So if you ask your congregation and 
I thought that's not going to happen. <laughs> so he, uh, you know, uh, uh, he went to his congregation, talked to them, uh, he read our letters, and the congregation accepted with a standing ovation. And so, so um, unfortunately, you know, right after, right after I talked to, to him, um, somebody um, uh, drove all, all the way from Montana to Loveland, and uh, she bought a crowbar and this destroyed the book. And she was just uh, uh, mad, but most likely listening to the news at Fox News, and, uh, it, it, and unfortunately destroyed destroy the work. And uh, she was wearing a t-shirt that said, uh, Jesus is tougher than nails. But the interesting thing is the pastor in Loveland, the, the one that I became friends with, um, he wonders if Jesus is tougher than nails, why anybody has to defend him? He could defend himself. You know? So in any case, uh, I will say if you don't like my work, don't come to see it. You don't have, <laughs> you, you know, you don't have to get mad. They change the channel. <laughs> Anyway, so um, nevertheless, that didn't stop me from making my portrait for, for the Resurrection Fellowship. So this is what I'm working on uh, right now. Hope to put color very soon and ship it to, to Colorado. Um, and I already sent it to the pastor. They liked it very much. Uh, for me, it's important that they're happy with the, with the portrait. And um, so, so it's going there. I decided to put the words love on top. And apparently that coincides with some text in the Bible where Jesus has a banner of love over everybody. And I decided to make this painting basically uh, more than anything uh, as a statement for, uh, for, for the openness of, uh, of dialogue, for people who might have different points of view about anything, but they have the civility to talk to each other. And to me, this is a tribute to, to civility, in any, if, if anything. And also a tribute to the true messages of uh, Jesus that, for me, are very much the opposite of what many politicians do in, in any way. Um, so so I, um, this, I, I'm just going to show you a few, few details from, from the work. And uh, so anyway, I'm very happy with the painting and uh, I'm very, very glad that this is, has been maybe the, the most positive outcome from something that was so negative. And, you know, I'm very tired of vitriolic language and, and um, hate mail that nobody needs and doesn't take anywhere. So um, let me see what else I have coming up. Um, let me talk about more recent... Uh, books, maybe, um, since I was already there. And so otherwise, I will take forever here. Um, let me talk about this. This is another book on the economies in the exhibition here. And uh, it's called The Enlightened Savage Guide to Economic uh, Theory. And this is a book I did for... Um, you're going to lose a little bit from the edges, but you could see it better this way. Um, for the Sydney Biennale, I was at the Sydney Biennale uh, earlier last year, and uh, that was a great experience for me, and I decided to do something about the economy for, for them. Um, the guy on the upper left is uh, in the money, in the dollar, uh, Australian dollar, with the Southern Cross stars, and it's just an Aboriginal uh, uh, that they put in their, in their coin. On the lower right, it's a plantation in Brazil from the 1800s. Uh, so let me see if I could, it's really hard to go either too small or too big, but I think this is better. So um, it's sort of like a, a, the class structure uh, reflecting some kind of frivolous experience here on the left. On the right, you could barely see a gas pump uh, logo. And so, um, Again, I'm not trying to make any specific statement in most of my books. Again, I'm just expressing some of my own anxieties. I never try to convince anybody about my ideas. Um, I just feel happy or lucky to get rid of my own demons. I exorcise them with my own work. 
Um, but anyways, here, I guess um, the influence of my, my dad's office is very visible. I have all these uh, money bills, the Cuban money with Che, there is uh, Chinese money on the, on the bottom. And I decided just to block their eyes. Uh, I don't know why, I thought they just looked funnier. Um, let me see, you could see the, 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 the Disney dollar on the lower left as well. Um, so more pages of the same book. I replaced some rocks for brains, uh, since brains could be a commodity, uh, especially for very, very inventive uh, people. <laughs> so, um, in other words, you know, like what's behind the money? Uh, and and the, the last page with the, the flag of uh, Australia on the left. Um, it's a stereotypical uh, image that it's from the late 1950s, which I found in a book in, in, uh, in the flea market uh, in Mexico, but the book was published in Cuba in 1959. This is another book that is not in the exhibition, Surviving Paradise, which uh, gave title to, to this show, and this is all drawings, a novel savage guide. Um, so it's, it's about global warming here. Uh, the whole book is a, has a flood, and no, you don't see the flood there, uh, with endangered species interacting, uh, like whales, and um, this, uh, this Japanese lady surviving the storm. Uh, but anyway, so uh, again, like most of my books, the, there is no specific uh, sentence or, or reading. It's all metaphorical and Hopefully the viewer might find them more uh, funny than insulting, but um, it's uh, people trying to survive the, the, the flood of uh, you know, the economic times or the global warming. It could be more than one meaning, um, it's some kind of a rebirth. And let me just, um, this is another, like the original Border Patrol uh, arresting the, um, the Daniel Boone uh, daughter, actually that's one. And let me move on to uh, closer um, uh, times here. Oh, let me show you a little bit, um, uh, just a couple of drawings here. This one here is um, uh, interesting because uh, what's going on in Egypt is uh, pretty uh, amazing right now. And I made this kind of like a portrait of power on top of pyramids, uh, and these are the pyramids of Egypt in, uh, originally. And when I made it, I made it more as, a, as an idea to show that how history repeats itself, and it repeats itself over and over. Um, and it's very unfortunate because it seems like people don't learn much from, from history. Somebody asked me when I did this, that was in uh, 2004, I believe, if somebody asked me, because that was under George Bush, uh, if that was the George Bush father and George Bush son, and I say no. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to draw them, you know, um, I, I, I will make them like this. Um, since everybody portrays themselves as, you know, the, the nice people and, and like a fairy tale characters. Um, so, um, I guess I don't need to tell who's, who's who, and um, the, the back, the witch is Osama Bin Laden in the back, and um, although I think Fox News is, uh, it's a self-portrait, don't believe them. Uh, I did uh, appropriations of Philip Gaston drawings. Um, uh, Philip Gaston is another of my favorite artists. So um, I only, you know, he did all these series of drawings uh, 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 making a satire of